We've now reached a point in the presentation where we can gradually stop climbing uphill and we can uh, reach a sort of plateau at the Brassmann Leibniz mixed tensor algebra kind of review slash overview where we kind of have now covered enough of the foundations that we can talk at a more higher level about differential geometric algebra in the way that we'd like to see. So two of the particularly interesting operations that we're going to get interested in are the so-called boundary operation and the exterior differential. And what's interesting about the boundary operation is that it satisfies uh, what's the called the Poincaré lemma. And that means basically if you compose the boundary operation with itself, that equals zero. This is just a, a fundamental property that you can check based on, you know, the properties of exterior algebra and the regressive products and the complements and so on. But how is this actually defined? Well, the boundary operation is basically we start to introduce the differential operation nabla, which is a sum of differential operators uh, multiplied by the vector basis. And that's a mixed tensor now. We're now no longer just talking about the vector basis. We're talking about a mixed basis with differential operators and vectors combined. And that's why we have in differential geometric algebra in our foundation so far, we have considered both kind of tensors as part of our tensor algebra and part of the operations in our algebra. We can deal with both the vectors and the differential operators. And now we take the uh, epsilon, for example, and take the regressive product with the complement of this uh, nabla, basically, and that defines the boundary operation, which, when composed with itself, is equal to zero. And there's a similar thing that's called the exterior differential, and that's D. And that's formed by basically taking the uh, nabla operator and wedging it or taking the exterior product with the form omega. And that is uh, similar to the curl and the uh, cross product. If you also apply the complement operation additionally in composition with a external differential D. So uh, the more abstracted notation of the external differential and the boundary operator, they somewhat hide the fact that what we're doing is we're combining differential operators with the exterior product and with the regressive product, both by applying some the uh, Hodge complement to the expressions. And um, if we more explicitly write it out, then we can see what the definition is saying. But it's quite nice to have this uh, compact notation offered up by the uh, boundary operator and the exterior differential. It should also now be trivial for you to check that D applied twice or DD should also equal to zero in a similar Poincaré lemma fashion as the boundary operator. And that's uh, trivial to understand if you recall from the beginning of our presentation the property of linear dependence. It's a simple application of that property to see that d applied twice is also equal to zero. Now we'll get to one of the most important theorems of differential geometric algebra, which is the so-called Clifford-Dirac-Hodge-Laplacian decomposition. So what we have is we have this thing that's in the literature called the Dirac operator. 
but if we study it carefully and and understand what it is at its core and we study the differential geometric algebra foundations then we can understand that the Dirac operator is nothing but the square root of the Laplacian which you know is a very great mystery if you do not know differential geometric algebra but if you do know differential geometric algebra it's not such a great mystery after all because we can actually understand quite concretely what it is and it's just the product of nabla and omega and that's just the geometric product and in particular in this theorem it's not just the geometric product we have the decomposition of it into the sum of the boundary operator and the exterior differential so it turns out that taking the sum of the boundary operator and the exterior differential is equal to this geometric product which is a Dirac operator which is the square root of the Laplacian so to speak but uh, now once you're aware of this Dirac operator you can also check that the product in that's in the theorem here is actually not commutative and so if you swap nabla and omega these are not equal to each other the products and however with the Laplacian that wasn't the case those were equal to each other it didn't matter whether you applied the Laplacian before or after and that's because the Laplacian is a scalar quantity whereas the Dirac operator is not but we can um, we can observe that the composition of the uh, operators can be done in several different ways and understood in different kind of expressional forms another theorem which is particularly interesting is the integration by parts theorem that can be fully generalized in terms of the Grassmann Leibniz mixed tensor algebra so in this situation we let nabla be part of the Leibnizian vector field operator and then we again use d and the boundary operator and these turn out to be Hilbert adjoint hodge Duram operators which as a result satisfy these properties and that's what this theorem says basically so there's actually two parts to this theorem I've kind of taken two th parts to it and combined it into one and there's this integral theorem with the integral over m of d omega times the wedge product of the complement of eta and then plus the integral over m of omega wedge the boundary the complement of the boundary of eta and that equals to zero and uh, another similar expression it's not exactly the same expression but it's a similar type of expression meaning with a similar uh, foundation and that's when you basically take the inner product of d omega and eta and omega and the boundary of eta and we can equate these two expressions to each other as a scalar product expression and this is a particularly interesting theorem uh, to just think about and because it's it's a quite general statement and this is also a part of the reason why we set up all these foundations of differential geometric algebra because we want to be able to reach a stage where we can talk about theorems like this and we can be fairly certain about the foundations that were satisfying the original Grassmann definitions and theorems and axioms 
that uh, make the theorems that we want compatible and consistent with each other. Let's take a moment to think about how we simplify Maxwell's equations into a single wave equation. So we can just start by taking the definition of a Faraday bivector dA with ddA equal to zero. So as we know, if we have something like dA, ddA has to equal to zero just from linear dependence, just because of what we know about exterior algebra and the Grassmann foundations. And we define the Faraday bivector dA as E times VT plus the complement of B times VT, where E is an electric field and B is a magnetic field, and A is the vector potential. And that's just the definition of the Faraday bivector. Now, we want to think about Maxwell's equations, and they should be transformed into a single wave equation, right? That's one of the goals of, or uh, one of the things advertised about geometric algebra or differential geometric algebra. And since we already know DDA is equal to zero, just by definition, by the definitions of what we already have talked about in the foundations of differential geometric algebra, Gauss's law and Faraday's law are already a given f just from the definition of the Faraday bivector. So we don't need to do any additional work when we recognize that Gauss's law and Faraday's law correspond to DDA is equal to zero. But we do need some additional thinking when it comes to star D star DA is equal to J. And this is what we really mean when we talk about simplifying Maxwell's equation to a single equation because what we end up creating or talking about is the Laplacian of A equal to J, which is the uh, Maxwell's equations written as a wave equation in terms of geometric algebra. And when we really think about this is star D star D A or the geometric product of nebula times dA, as I uh, show in the expressions. And these two correspond to Gauss's law and Ampere's law. These um, star d star dA equal to j. And as a result, that's how we get Maxwell's equations rewritten in, as a single equation because we know that DDA is equal to zero so we don't need to define that equation or really talk about it because it's kind of by definition and by the properties of everything that's going on in differential geometric algebra but the equation that we do need to worry about is star D star DA equal to J and that's simplifying Maxwell's equation into a single equation it's not just computational language that has to be implemented, but it's mathematical theorems and definitions and axioms that have to be satisfied that it's necessary to look at the mathematical foundations and the theorems and to think about the proofs a little bit. What that leads to is the uh, design of the computational language that I ended up with and I put into my code repository on GitHub, grassman.jl. And um, I've now written a paper about it and included a bunch of the theorems and some of the information discussed in this presentation is all included in the paper about the foundations of differential geometric algebra. It's called Grassman.jl for a reason because the emphasis in my uh, program is to try to satisfy the original Grassman laws and help from that derive the correct understanding, making sense of things in the world. And that's why I um, created this uh, Julia package, grassman.jl, which is available on GitHub. And these fundamental mathematical principles 
they're universal, so these things have to be understood before they can be transmitted further, and there has to be a little bit of rigor behind it, and that's why we have taken a look at some of the theorems. I'm just trying to provide my perspective of how I how the foundations should be constructed for foundations of differential geometric algebra and Rasman.jl is a particular implementation of that in computational language which manifests these uh, abstract concepts I talked about in computational language and using that I verify my thoughts about it. Please help sponsor and fund this research and development project. There is a need for funding of mathematical research project outside of academia.